Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Luke Hosh, and today we're going to be talking about wires, gates, and circuits for homework five. So what's really important here, I think, is that when we're discussing these, when we're looking at them in racket, that we don't get kind of caught up in, you know, a wire is identified by a racket symbol. We have to remember that what we're thinking about are circuits in this sense. You're going to have to bear with me this this video will involve a number of crude drawings in OneNote, but this is the type of circuits we're talking about. So when we say something like a wire, we're referring to like this X here, this input wire. When we say a gate, we're referring to something like this AND. When we're referring to an input wire, it's like this X, and an output wire is Z. Something can be both an input and an output, but we'll get to that later. So we're going to be coming back and forth to this OneNote document and seeing how the, the ideas we're going through with circuits, wires, and gates in Racket uh, makes sense in this context so that we don't get mixed up. Okay, back to Racket. So it says, a wire is identified by a Racket symbol. For example, X, Y0, or next. Strings are not permitted in wire names, so Racket symbols just like this. Basically what that's telling us is that the name of any wire here it's just we're going to identify it by putting a single apostrophe in front of it. Single quote or an apostrophe. Okay, that's fairly simple. Now let's look at the definition of a gate. So a gate is a struct with three fields. Right, so remember, really quick, when we, when we say gate, what we're talking about is like this AND here. But there are, of course, more types than just an AND. There's also OR gates, a NOT gate. I think there are NOR gates, a whole bunch of other stuff, exclusive ORs. Right, so it defines the type of gates here. Uh, it has, did I copy that? No, okay. The, a symbol indicating the type of the gate, and it must be one of these six. Either a not, and, or, xor, nand, and nor. So really quickly we can uh, remember what these are. Not takes in a zero and outputs a one, or takes in a one and outputs a zero, and outputs one, only when both of its inputs are 1, or outputs 1 when either of its inputs is 1, it has to have at least one input be 1, or both of them can be 1. XOR, uh, you cannot have both inputs be 1. XOR is essentially the inputs are different from each other. NAND is the same as NOT AND, so anything other than two 1 inputs will output a 1. And NOR is NOT OR or essentially neither of the inputs are ones. Okay. Two more fields. The second field is a list of wire identifiers of the inputs. So what are the inputs to this gate? And the output wire identifier. There's only one output wire. Okay, we cannot have something like, oh this and and then we're gonna have it output two different wires. Right? That doesn't that doesn't make sense. The output of every single one of these gates is one wire with a value. Okay, so that makes sense, right? If we had another wire here and say x was 1 and y was 1, well z should be 1, what would this other wire be? That, that doesn't really make any sense. Okay. Now let's look at the function good gate. <clears throat> so it says basically what, what we looked up, or what we read in the definition up here. It says the type field must be one of these types. The input must be a list of wire identifiers with an important note that it must match the type of the gate. So if it's a NOT, there's only one input. And if it's an AND or XOR or NAND or NOR, then those have two inputs. <coughs> the output field is a single wire identifier. So for the function good gate, I think maybe it would just be easiest if you did something like create a helper function for each of these and then you can pass the type field of the gate into your first helper function. It'll say something, or it'll do something like running through, or it'll check if the type of your gate is a symbol. It'll check if that symbol is any of, any of these six. Okay, that's pretty easy to do, right? You can use, give you a hint, the function member might help. Um, Member is, uh, member is a function that does a little bit of the searching work for you. I can give you maybe an example. I'll say something like 
member uh, one zero one two three and then I'll say what about if it's not in the list oops <clears throat> so member will output false if the element you give it is not in the list you give it and it will output part of that list if the element is in it so I can use this to check if an element is in a list I could do something like gate or I would write member gate type uh, gate one then I would put the list nor and XOR or etc right so that might help you figure out whether you have a correct gate type for the input field we have to check if it's a list of wire identifiers which remember are just symbols just racket symbols I'm sure you can recursively go through a list and check if it's full of racket symbols uh, you can also check the length and see if that length matches this using some sort of conditional statement perhaps that might be in a second helper function and then your third helper function could do something like well, maybe you don't even need one for this, right? You can just ask, is this output of my gate a wire identifier? Or in other words, a racket symbol. Is there a function, maybe something like symbol, that checks if something is a racket symbol? Yes, there is. Okay, so we've gone through how to approach this good gate problem. Circuits are more complicated, and checking if something's a good circuit is also more complicated. So. I'll, help, I'll, I'll walk through that with you as well. It says a circuit is a struct with three fields. A list of input wire identifiers, a list of output wire identifiers, and a list of gates. So let's go back to our, our example in OneNote. Uh, let me, can I erase? <clears throat> here. So this whole thing here, this, is a circuit. Let's think about what those three fields would be. So the first field we say is the inputs of the circuit. In that case, or in this case here, the inputs would be X and Y, right? Those are the only things that go into my circuit. Maybe I can draw a line here to say, these are the things I have to input, and on the other end are the things I have to output. Okay? Second field, outputs. Well, we, we said that, we said that it would be Z in this case, just Z. Right, because it's on the right side of this line. And then the gates. Well, in this case, we only have one gate. It's an AND gate. But of course, we could have a much more complicated circuit, right? I could do something like, oops, zoom out. I can I have to go back to draw. Maybe this Z is the input of another AND gate. quite hard to write with a mouse pad, but that's okay. And maybe this, uh, let's see, let's have another input. We'll call it A. And that input will go to this one over here. And then maybe this is an output, but also A is an output, so A can break. Okay, and these are my two outputs, and I'll call this wire B. So now I have outputs of A and B and inputs of x, y, and a. Okay, so inputs x, y, and a, outputs b and a, and gates, well remember that a gate is not just a type of a gate, right? The gate is not just and, but the gate is the inputs x, y, the gate type and, and the output z, and then this gate would be the inputs a and z, the gate and, and the output b. All right. Let's think about this definition of a circuit really quickly in these two examples. So here are the inputs. It says there are no inputs to this clock circuit 2. The outputs are Z and A. So that's fine, right? Is that, is that fine? That's kind of confusing. How would we have a circuit with no inputs but that does have outputs? Well here, let's think about it. Let's look at the two gates. So there's a NOT gate and another NOT gate. This NOT gate has an input of Z and an output of A, 
the other NOT gate has an input of A and an output of Z. So let's draw what it might look like. So here's one NOT gate. I'm just going to put the letter N for NOT. It says the input is, what was it, A. Output is Z. Then the input to our second NOT gate is Z. The output is A. So that would go whoop, right around back there. I'm not saying necessarily that this is a good gate, but or sorry, a good circuit, but this is a circuit as defined by <coughs> defined clock circuit 2. You can see here it says the outputs are Z and A, so I guess I didn't write that in yet. Um, the outputs would be, well, this wire goes out and this wire also goes out. In some way, these are our outputs. All right. I'm not going to draw out the whole cell circuit, but you can see inputs are X1, X0, Y1, Y0, and S. Outputs are Z1 and Z0. And then there's just a bunch of gates that tell you how to calculate these different things. So the function good circuit uh, is, is a little bit hefty. You have a lot of different conditions you have to check that are actually quite rigorous tests. But I want us to understand, again, I think the easiest approach to these or to this function is to write a helper for each of these. And then you just, uh, you just ask, do all four of my helpers return true when I run them on my input circuit? And if they do, then you have a good circuit. And that also makes it easier to debug because if you're outputting true in a case where you're supposed to output false or vice versa, then you can say, well, which one of these cases uh, am, I, am I messing up? You can look at an example or you know, the, the exact test case that you're failing, and you can say, why is this a good circuit? Why is it not a good circuit? And then check if your helper 2 correctly evaluates whether every input is a etc. Anyway. So let's go over each of these and really quick uh, try to understand what they mean. So no input of the circuit is the output of a gate. So let's go back here. Here, the output of a gate, so this wire here that goes back around, is not an input of the circuit, even though it is an input of the gate, right? So an in no input of the circuit is the output of a gate means that you cannot uh, output a value that is that is put into the circuit. So maybe uh, it's a little bit hard to explain. Um, it wouldn't make sense for me to do something like this to say to say for example, let me add in uh, what if I did something like this? What if I, I change this Z, instead of this being Z, I said, I want this to also be A. Well, that wouldn't work, work, right? Because here it says A is dependent on X and Y, but here I've input A into my circuit. So it can't be dependent on X and Y, it's dependent on what value I give it when I input it into the circuit. So it's saying you can't do that. You can't have the output be, of a gate also be an input of the circuit. Every input of a gate is either an input of the circuit or the output of a gate. Okay, so every input of every gate, right? So that's like, let me fix this uh, back to what it was before. That was a Z. So it says that all of our inputs to gates, like here, X, Y are both inputs to this gate. This Z is an input to this gate. A is an input to this gate. Must either be input to my circuit right, input from here, or they must be an output of a gate. So say I had some gate over here, it was like an OR gate, and I wanted it to have an input of letter C. I can't just generate C from nowhere, right? C has to either be input to the circuit, or it has to be output from another gate. So maybe C is the output of some other gate elsewhere in my circuit. But I can't just say, you know, take C and put it into this gate without saying, well, this is where C comes from. And the only two places C could come from are the inputs of the circuit 
or the outputs of another gate. Okay, I'll erase that. I hope that makes sense. We can't generate wires from nowhere. No wire is the output of two or more gates. I think that's pretty similar to the idea we had above where we kind of can't contradict, uh, we can't have competing values of wires. So I can't say something like, you know, have this output Z and then have this output also be Z, right? Because what if these two things return different values? That just doesn't work. We can't have two outputs be the same wire. And then every output of the circuit is either an input of the circuit or an output of a gate. So similarly to this second condition, kind of like we can't generate wires from nowhere, we can't have output wires from nowhere, right? I can't have output, let's say letter M, and that M comes from nowhere, right? The M has to either come from the output of some gate somewhere in my, somewhere in my circuit, or it has to come from an input. One note here is that by that definition of a good circuit, it's okay to just have an input go directly across, to have no gates in the circuit. Right? An input, M is input, and M is also an output. That's totally fine. It doesn't have to go through, you know, a not you know, a bunch of gates or whatever. You can have an input be an output as well. Okay? I hope those requirements kind of make sense. Basically, they're saying we, we don't want to contradict ourselves by having two different wires that are the same thing. You know, you can't have an input that's also an output of a gate, input to the circuit and output of a gate. You can't have an output of the circuit that's uh, that's, what was it? You can't have an output of a circuit uh, that is that comes from nowhere, right? Uh, no wire is the output of two or more gates. They can't they can't conflict, and no input or yeah. Anyway, I think I think we've covered these four. Kind of explained why they're necessary for you to have a circuit that makes logical sense. Um, these are a little bit clunkily written, so I hope kind of looking at an example circuit made some sense to you uh, while why these are requirements. Um, I'll provide another quick piece of advice. You'll notice that it's very easy to get the inputs and outputs of a circuit in Racket, right? We talked about earlier in the last two p-sets you had to use it, how to get elements of a struct. I can do something like circuit inputs and then some specific circuit this will give me the inputs of the circuit. I can do the same thing with the outputs, right? That's pretty trivial. But in this good circuit definition, you also have to check like the outputs of the gates. And the outputs of the gates are harder to get. There's no command that will, you know, no single function that will get you all of the outputs of all of these gates. So maybe it would help you to have a function a helper function called like, I'll write this out, maybe write helper functions to get the outputs of all of the gates and two, the inputs of all of the gates. Because remember for this condition it said every input of a gate is blah 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 but that means you have to go through all of the inputs and, and check them right? That sounds to me like you're going to be recursively checking, uh, or it doesn't have to be recursively, but you probably want, you know, like a list of all of the inputs, and then you can go through them and check whether they fit either, whether they're either an input of the circuit or an output of a gate. Okay. This, this is going to end up being a chunk of code. Uh, you know, usually the, the staff solutions for these, Professor Slade writes the answers to problems in like five lines. This one is, is pretty hefty, even in Dr. Slade's code. Um, so there's no way around it. You have to write out pretty extensive checking for all of these conditions. Um, I hope I've given you some idea of how to approach that and, and why these make sense. You should have some, a better understanding of wires and gates and circuits and how we're representing them in Racket, but how that mirrors what an actual circuit is. Uh, as always, if you have questions, please come into office hours or email the CS201 help email or post on Piazza. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.